get ourselves out of ourselves so that you can be God. Yes, yes. And Father, I ask you, Lord, that today, Lord, that, Lord God, that you would open up our ears, our eyes, and our hearts to hear what you have to do today, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord and Father, I bind the enemy in every distraction right now in the name of Jesus. Anything right now that would cause us, Lord God, not to focus in on what you have today, Lord. Yes. Father, Lord, may it be like flint, Lord God. And Father, I ask you, Lord, that this morning, Lord God, that you would prepare these hearts so that these hearts are ready to receive what you have, Lord. Yes, and Father, we're careful, Lord, to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn over to the book of Nehemiah. It's one of my favorite, favorite books of the Bible, along with the 65 other ones. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I was going to bring some tennis balls today and start to juggle. Yeah. Problem is, I don't know how to juggle. It'd be kind of silly up here just doing two balls, amen? So uh, you're going to have to kind of look through all of that and pretend that I am juggling, amen? You know what I mean? It's, it's amazing because um, one of the things that I've been seeing over the past few weeks is something called distractions. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Anybody here distracted? All right, there's a handful of you. Mr. you're all right. Man, you need to get up here and share the word then. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know. Distractions come in many different ways. Please, I want you to realize and understand, as I'm sharing today, if it's an ouch word, say ouch. If it's an amen word, say amen. Amen? Because you know what? This is something that I believe, you know, was uh, last night, I uh, had a privilege uh, meeting with some uh, brothers, and, brothers and sisters in Christ. We had dinner and we were talking about some different things. And one of the things that we talked about was how uh, we all kind of are in agreement that um, the church is really in slumbering right now. The church is slumbering. The church is sleeping. You know, we're going through the motions. We're showing up on Sunday morning, you know, listen to a good music, just listen to, listen to a message, and then we all go home and we go about our own business and so forth and so on. And the bottom line of being is there is a tremendous amount of distractions. The enemy has a great way of distracting you from what God's got in store for you. Yes, he does. Amen? Amen? He's got a plan for you. I don't, if you don't know this or not, I'm telling you right now, this isn't a prophetic word, this is truth. Everybody in this room has been called by God to do something. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some of us, God is called to do a little bit more, some of us a little bit less. It doesn't matter what we do. But the bottom line up being is, is that we're obedient in what God calls us and asks us to do. When we do that, as, as, our, as, John, as Johnny G over here would say over and over and over, Johnny, talk, tell, me, tell me the message a long time ago. What is it? How are we fulfilled? I said it a long time ago and it's still registered. Go ahead, share it. Well, when the Holy Spirit asks you to do something, do it. you do it. You give God all the glory, and then you're satisfied. There you go. Not the other way around. Amen. 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 You're satisfied when? When you've completed the task that God has asked you to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to talk a little bit about distractions today. But we're going to use Nehemiah. I'm going to use the book of Nehemiah to explain that distractions, as you see up here, distractions come in many different ways. And sometimes we don't look at distractions like that. And the first thing we want to do is to blame the enemy. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yep. The first thing we want to do is, oh man, yeah, Satan, they don't have you with me right now. Mm -hmm. yep. But I want you to realize that sometimes what ends up being is it's your fault. Yep. It's not the enemy's fault. It's your fault. It's because you weren't obedient. It's because you didn't do what God asked you to do. You know, I can, I can stand up here all I want and, and, and jump around and jump around and jump around. If I keep going, eventually this chair is going to break. Why? Not because the enemy I went down there and I'm loosing the bolts, but because I kept jumping on this thing. Amen? 
And what we want to do, oh, look at that. The enemy man, the enemy messed my knee up because I was jumping on that chair. Mm -hmm. Amen? Can I get an amen? amen? Let's put it in perspective. And so many times what we want to do is we want to blame the enemy, but we're also going to see how the enemy uses others and other scenarios in our life to distract you. Yep. Amen? And I see that so many times, especially in ministry. In ministry, it is so, so critical because we need each other more than you can even imagine. Amen? When one of us is down and out, we need to not to just say, hey, you know what? Lord, just bless them. But we need to literally pray for them. Yes. Because no matter what it is, no matter what one of these distractions are up here, you see, and we can't buy into it, and we have to be able to be prepared and to be a good encouragement to someone. Can I get an amen? amen? All right. The art of juggling. Now, I want you to think about this. I mean, you've probably seen guys do uh, chainsaw. They do flames. They do, I'm just going to use balls, okay? I got five balls up here. Do you all see them? Yeah. All right. Man, I got you got it good now. <laughs> hey, amen. Are you ready? Here we go. All right? All right. We're, and I'm juggling. See, the art of juggling is this. You only keep one ball in your hand. Let me say that again. You only keep one ball in your hand. What happens if all of a sudden all those balls come down and land in my hands? I'm in deep trouble, ain't I? You see, the bottom line of being is this. Something that I, I, I just, just recently learned <laughs> is that I am a husband, I'm a father, I'm a son, I am a pastor, I'm a neighbor, and I'm a friend. And, and when I go to bed at night and I put my head down, I have to understand and acknowledge to myself that probably one of those positions I failed today. Not one of us in here can be a good husband, a good father, a good son, a good friend, a good neighbor, and a good pastor or a minister all the time. Amen? And we have to realize and understand that. You see, we're not superhuman. Even though Christ is in us, there are times that we fail. Amen? And the thing that ends up being is, I may sometime maybe after church, and I'm sure it's probably happened, after church, that maybe I get up to get and give Hen and give Henry a hug or say hi. And Henry may go home and say, geez, I guess pastor's mad at me today. I failed at being a pastor and a friend. You see, we have to realize and understand that it's okay, it's okay to realize that we do fail. Amen? That we can't be everybody, any, everything to everybody. We can't be that. And yet the world wants us to be. Amen? The world wants us to be. And therefore, all of a sudden, what happens is opposition comes in. Well, you know, it was, I, was sharing, um, I was sharing a thing last night. I was talking with Ray and Jim. And uh, we got talking, and, I, and we were talking about this. And I said, it's like if I told Jim something, and I forgot to tell Ray, and Jim and Ray were talking... And he says something to Ray, and then Ray all of a sudden says, oh, I guess I'm not as important as Jim because he didn't tell me either. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Do you see how those things can become distractions? It's not a distraction for me. It was a distraction for Ray. You see, sometimes we have to realize this, that we all err. Amen? We all struggle in those particular areas. Can I get an amen? Amen. I want you to realize that there's two different types of people. This is the way I categorize them. There are some people that are like... Eagles. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. Look at that. Amen? That like to fly and soar. Amen? And there are also some... That are like a lot of the other bird family. There are sparrows. There are chickens. There are buzzards. There are all the other types that literally they're all on the same playing field. Amen? Yeah. 
And they all see it the same way. And we have to realize is the eagle here doesn't see what they see, and they can't see what he sees. Amen? Because, see, the thing that ends up being is what happens is these particular birds are out there picking all day long, trying to eat, trying to take care of things. They're getting in one another's problems. They're getting in one another's issues and so forth and so on. But the eagle is out there flying high up there in the sky by himself, just <laughs> nice and peaceful and quiet, looking down and sees a rabbit. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Goes down, grabs that rabbit, yeah. and has a nice rabbit stew. <laughs> Amen. You see, today we have to realize, and we go in and we're looking at Nehemiah. Nehemiah was an eagle. But he happened to hang around with a lot of people that were like blue jays and sparrows yeah. Yeah. and buzzards and all that stuff. Let's look at the scriptures and let's see where, where we're going with this. Can I say amen? Can you say amen? amen. You see, one thing that I learned uh, years ago about being an eagle. An eagle does something. He just flies high up in the air. He spreads his wings and he soars with the current and how the current flows. But if you ever see a sparrow, <laughs> amen, they use so much energy, amen. All the, all the birds that fly along this way, if you look at them, they flap like anything, getting from one place to another. But an eagle is up there with very little expense or energy and just flies and soars. Amen. Hallelujah. I could stop right now. I think y'all got something already. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Turn over to Nehemiah, chapter 2, verse 11 to 20. Now, I'm going to read something. This is the first time you probably don't see me do this. I'm actually reading out of a contemporary English version, not the King James. And I did that because this is a very, very interesting way that they share it. <clears throat> so I will say what, what verse I'm on so you can kind of get an idea. Verse 11. Three days after arriving in Jerusalem, 12, I got up during the night and left my house. I took some men with me without telling anyone what I thought God wanted me to do for the city. The only animal I took was the donkey I rode on, 13. I went through Valley Gate on the west, then south past Dragon Spring, before coming to Garbage Gate. As I rode along, I took a good look at the crumbled walls of the city and the gates that had been torn down and burnt. Verse 14. On the east side of the city, I headed north to Fountain Gate and King's Pool. But then the trail became too narrow for my donkey. 15. So I went down to Kidron Valley and looked at the well from there. Then, before daylight, I returned to the city through Valley Gate. 16. None of the city officials knew what I, what I had in mind, and I had not even told any of the Jews, not the priests, not the leaders, not the officials, and any other Jews who would be helping in the work. 17. And when I got back, I said to them, Jerusalem is truly in a mess. The gates have been torn down and burned and everything is in ruins. We must rebuild the city wall so that, excuse me, so that we can again take pride in our city. 18. Then I told them how God, how, how, then I told them how kind God had been and what the king had said. Immediately they responded, they replied, let's start building now. So they got together, they got everything ready. Verse 19. When Sam Ballot, Tobiah, and Geshem, the Arab, heard about their plans, they started insulting us and saying, Just look at you. Do you plan to rebuild the walls of the city and re rebel against the king? 20. I answered, We are servants of the God who rules from heaven, and he will make our work succeed. So we will start rebuilding Jerusalem but you have no right to any of its property because you have not, you have had no part in its history. Right. I want you to see and understand that 
The whole thing that I'm looking at, we're going to go over to verse, we're going to go over to chapter 4, is Nehemiah already was told by God to do something. See, God's called each and every one of you to do something. Amen? And I'll tell you this right now, that the, your worst enemy, your worst enemy is not only the people that are out there, but sometimes it's yourself. Sometimes it's yourself. Sometimes we doubt that we heard from God. Sometimes God speaks to us and all of a sudden it's like, well, it's not working the way I think it's working, so maybe it wasn't God. Amen? But, as we see here, the greatest opposition comes from not other eagles, but from the blue jays and the sparrows. Because, you see, they can't see what you see. Amen? You see, when God tells you to do something, what you need to do is you need to be obedient. And understand this, that no matter what, you're going to come under opposition. Amen? We, we saw that, as, as I haven't really shared with you, and maybe I should, uh, all this stuff that went on. Since the election day, remember we were talking about, since the election day, everything has been absolutely quiet. Quiet. No opposition, no problems, no belly aching, no attacking, no nothing. Amen? Those that what? Wait upon the Lord, He will renew their strength. Mount them up as wings of eagles. They will walk and not be weary, rut, run and not faint. We have to either trust God or not trust God. We either have to believe what his word says or literally say, you know what, Lord, let me kind of rationalize this. You see, the bottom line in being is we have to realize that even all the opposition, even all the stuff, if you stand still and see the salvation of God, you will. What did Moses do? Here, Moses is sitting there uh, by the Red Sea. Amen? We all know the story, right? He's sitting by the Red Sea. He's got millions of people out there. He's, his back is against the Red Sea, and all of a sudden he looks up and he can see all the smoke coming from all the Egyptian armies ready to slaughter them. We'd be sitting there going, I'm in charge here, and now what are we going to do? What are we going to do? God, what are we going to do here? And God says, use what you have. He says, take your, take your, take your staff. And immediately God surrounded them with a wall of fire so that the enemy could not get to them. And then God, and then he, he opens, he, he takes the, we all see, you know, we all see the Ten Commandments, oh, amen? Right. And, and, and Charles Heston grabs the, grabs the, 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 the uh, uh, staff and goes like that, and all of a sudden everything opens up. God will provide a way if we don't allow distractions to get involved. Amen? amen? amen. Distractions are nothing more but getting us off the path of what God has called us to do. Amen? <laughs> and sometimes it's not about... It, it, yeah, we. As our brother, as, as brother Skip said up here, to pray, 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 pray. And then sometimes it's time to just stand. Right. And you know what? You're still going to get people. I have, I have gotten a tremendous amount of phone calls from many different types of people. You need to do this. This is what you need to do. And the first thing I said is, God said to stand still and see his salvation. Let's see what God's going to do. Amen? Sure. I have to trust God. If I can't trust God, I might as well hand in my mic. Hand in my hand in all the stuff. Say, God, you go ahead and take over. Somebody take over the church. Praise the Lord. You got it. I'm out of here because I don't trust God. I have to trust God. Amen? Amen. And we all have to be in that same place. Here's the same scenario. On, the same scenario here is Nehemiah is in a place. Let me tell you something. This is the thing. It's not just about building a city, but it's about building back that which the enemy has stolen. Right. What has he stolen in your life? What has the enemy corrupted in your life? Maybe it's some of this stuff here. Maybe it's, maybe it's health. Maybe it's sickness. Maybe it's a, you're racked with sickness over and over and over. The enemy has stolen. See, every good and perfect thing comes from the Father which is in heaven. Sickness is not from God. Sickness is from the enemy. So the bottom line of being is, if you're racked with sickness and health, then the bottom thing you need to do is say, Lord, what do you want me to do? 
What do you want me to do? I'm standing on your healing. I'm standing on, you know, I mean, I've, I've heard the testimony from Skip, or you've heard the testimony from Mark and others that have been in here. You know, you know, even though Mark is sitting there with one eye kind of fuzzy and the other eye's got a patch, amen? <laughs> Mark's standing there on the Word of God knowing that everything's going to be okay. Amen. Amen. It's not a distraction. Amen. You see that? It could be a distraction. You see, Mark could be home right now, and I know, Mark could be home saying, you know, I know I can get to church, but you know what? I'm just going to play this up. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to use this as a tool and an instrument to let people know and let, let people understand that, you know what, man, I'm, I'm going through some struggles right now. Amen? We use sometimes our scenario and we like it to be a distraction so that we're not being used by God and doing what God wants us to do. Amen? Amen. I'll tell you right now, there's, there's been many, many times in the, in, in the past, you know the story about with cancer and stuff and everything like that? It's like, okay, Lord, all right, we're going to another phase of ministry. What do you want me to do? Give me a ministry. Amen. I'm not going to stop doing ministry. I don't care what the scenarios or what the circumstances, I'm still going to do ministry. Why? Because I know what God wants us to do. God doesn't want us to take these things to become a distraction for His plan and purpose to, to reach the lost that are out there each and every day in our lives. Amen? All He's doing is actually opening up another avenue for us to be able to use. Amen? Another avenue. How many times we go to the doctors and all of a sudden maybe the doctor may say to it or the, the somebody in, in, in the uh, uh, the door may say somebody off said you know what there's a person right next to you wants to start a conversation. Well, I don't want to start a conversation. You know, I mean, I don't want to really want to know what their problem is. They don't they, they don't look like they're having a problem with my problem. So why should I tell them their problem? I don't care about their problem. They don't care about my problem. <laughs> You see, do, you, do you understand where we're coming from here? Sometimes we realize that if, if, if all of a sudden, if all of a sudden we have an affliction, or we, bless you, we have an affliction or a problem or a situation or circumstance, use it to His glory. Amen. Use it to His glory. No matter what it is. Amen? I saw, I saw last week and the week before when all this stuff was going on, how many brothers in Christ were coming to the, my defense, and I'm like, Praise the Lord. But see, that's the thing. If you give it into God's hands, let God do what God needs to do. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's, let's, let's go, go back real quick, and then we'll go back up to, up to, uh, uh, up to 4. Verse 2 again. Chapter 2, excuse me. Notice in verse 19, it says, When Sambal, Tobiah, and Kishim, the Arab, heard about their plans, they started insulting us, they started insulting us. They started insulting us. Can I get an amen? amen? Go over to chapter 4. Let's look at it. This is Nehemiah's situation now. All of a sudden, he knows what God's called him to do. Amen? Maybe there's something in your life. Maybe there's something in my life. Maybe there's something in around the bowels. Maybe God's called you to do, no matter what it is, whether it's a job, whether it's whatever it may be. God's called you to do something. And the one of the things you're going to get is you're going to get opposition from people. Amen? Amen. You need to get up. <laughs> you see, here's the thing that we forget. See, when I'm down here, guess what I can see? Sickness and family and internet and cell phones, TV, home, job, finances. I can see all that. But man, when I'm up here, guess what? I don't see that anymore. Why? Because I'm up above it. Hallelujah. <laughs> give me a little, give me a little trim job here. Thank you, Jesus. Do we understand that? You see, when you get up here, what happens is you're up here next to God. You're hearing from God. You're seeing from God. You're listening to God. Your heart's being challenged by God. So what happens is all this stuff now becomes nothing more but a distraction that has nothing to do with what God's called you to do. Amen? Can you, can, you, can you get that? And sometimes what we realize is we want to stay down here because it's so easy. 
You know what? I, I, I've seen this over the years. You can't just be right up front with everybody. Amen. I've seen people that have a, a, a loved one who, have, who has gone, gone home to be with the Lord. And I know people that are not in the immediate family, but are friends of that. And you go to, go to a viewing, or I've done a viewing, or I've done a funeral. And it's like, they're walking around like, Man, you know, yeah. my life is just messed up now. You're not even a relative of this person. My mother-in-law, bless my mother-in-law, bless her, bless her, bless her, amen? Ever since I've been, we've been married 30-some years, amen, 35 years. 35 years, I've seen that woman take on everybody's problems, literally. When she hears something, first thing, you know, she'll call all the daughters and she'll say, oh, you should see so-and-so, you should see the situation. Do you believe it? Oh, my heart just breaks. <coughs> and there's a difference between compassion and letting the world in on your problem. Amen? Mm -hmm. And what happens is you literally, what you do is, you take on the world's problems. Let me tell you, there's only one qualified to do that, and that's Jesus. Amen. There's only one qualified to do that. Does that mean that we don't have compassion for people? No, no. I'm not saying that. But you don't take internalize somebody else's issues and problems. No. Because you will be destroyed. You will be destroyed, and it will become a distraction. Sometimes, some of the things we do in our lives that become, you know, you, you, we want to do it because, you, because of the good nature that's in us. But sometimes that good nature, what it does is it gets us down a path of little addiction to people that we get into a scenario that all we want to do is we just want to take everybody's problems on so we can go around and say, Henry, man, you should see so-and-so's yeah. problem, yeah. man. Yeah. You know, so-and-so's problem, and so-and-so's problem. So, you know what? We take it on. Instead of giving, what did, what did Skip say? Pray. Pray, right. right. Do what? Pray. Right. The scenario? Pray. Pray. Right. When this comes down the road, what do you do? Right. Pray. Why? Because he's sho his shoulders are much bigger than ours. Right. Amen. Amen. Let's get into the work. Hallelujah. Chapter 4, verse 1. When Sambal, the governor of Samaria, heard that they were rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, he became angry and started insulting our people. In front of his friends and the Samaritan army, he said, What is this feeble bunch of Jews trying to do? Are they going to rebuild the wall and offer sacrifices all in one day? Do they think that they can make something out of this pile of scorched stones. Tobiah from Ammon was standing beside Sambal and said, Look at that wall they're building. Why, well, even a fox could knock down a pile of those stones. But I pray, O oh God, these people hate us and have wished horrible things for us. Please answer our prayers and make, our ins make their insults fall on them. Let them be the ones to be dragged away as prisoners of war. Don't forgive the mean and evil way that they have insulted the builders. The people worked hard, and we build the walls of Jerusalem halfway up again. But Sambal, Tobiah, the Arabs, and the Ammonites, and the people of the city of Ashdod saw the walls going up and the holes being repaired, and they became angry and decided to stir up trouble and to fight against the people of Jerusalem. But we kept on praying to our God, and we also stationed guards day and night. Meanwhile, the people of Judah were singing a sorrowful song. So much rubble for us to haul, worn out and weary, will we ever finish the wall? Our enemies were saying, before those Jews knew know what has happened, we will sneak up and kill them and put an end to their work. Verse 13. On the last ten different occasions, the Jews living near our enemies warned us against attacks from every side. And so I sent people to guard the wall at its lowest places and where there were still holes in it. I placed them according to families, and they stood guard with swords and spears and with bows and arrows. Then I, looked, then I looked things over and told the leaders, 
the officials, and the rest of the people. Don't be afraid of your enemies. The Lord is great and fearsome. So think of him and fight for your relative and children, your wives, and your homes. Our enemies found out that they knew about their plot against us, but God kept them from doing what they had planned. So we went back to work on the wall. From then on, I let half of the young men work while the other half stood guard. They wore armor and had spears and shields as well as bows and arrows. The leaders helped the workers who were rebuilding the wall. Everyone who hauled building materials kept one hand free to carry a weapon. Even as the workers were, who were rebuilding the wall strapped on a sword, the worker who was to blow the, the signal trumpet stayed by me. I told the people and the officials and the leaders, our work is so spread out that we are long away from one another. If you hear the sound of the trumpet, come quickly and gather around me. Our God will help us fight. There's a lot of things going on there. A lot of things going on there. And I want you to realize is to be a team, to be an ecclesia, as we are an ecclesia first, and then we're part of the body of Christ. You see, when somebody hears that something's about to happen, what do we need to do? I'm encouraging everyone here. Mark has done a tremendous job of having a prayer chain that's on the internet. If you have an internet, if you have, if you have an email, please see and get on it. Because I'll tell you, we are seeing things happening. Why? It's because what's happening is when Mark puts it on there, it's like the trumpet being blown. It's saying, hey, everybody, take notice. We have something we need to pray for right now. And immediately, we come together as a team to be able to do what God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. It is so important. Sometimes what happens is, well, my, my prayer request maybe isn't as important enough. Every prayer request is important. doesn't matter where we are or what's going on. In God's eyes, it's very important. So if it's important to God, it's important to us. Amen? It's very, very important. The second thing that they had to do was what? They not only had their weapons, to, not only had their tools to build the wall, but they also carried a sword. And what I'm seeing so many times is this. We are so busy being about our jobs that we forget that we have a sword here. That we have the power and authority. That we have the authority to be able to use God's word and literally slice the enemy at any time if we're ready. If we don't have the sword, if we don't know the word of God, if we don't understand what God has for us and what he has done for us, we will not have a sword and we will become an easy prey to the enemy. Amen? Amen? So what to then ends up being a, a, situa a situation or a scenario that what happens is then we start getting on the internet every day say, I need help here, I need help here, I need help here, I need help here, I need help here. And no, 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 no. no. Amen? Learn how to use your weapon. Amen. Learn how to use the Word of God. You see, because the Word of God is, is, is more powerful than a two-edged sword. It cuts in and cuts out. Amen? And when we realize that and understand that, there is so much that what happens is we have all these issues and circumstances. Let's look at these, for example. Let's look at the scenarios that are going on. That we know that the Bible says that by His stripes we are healed. Amen? We know that. Amen? Amen. Does that mean that sickness is, is, is not going to come against us? No, because the, body, the bottom line of being is in the, Garden of, in the Garden of Eden, guess what? When that happened and they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, guess what? Death came into the world. What is sickness and health and all that? It's death. It's what it is. It's going to happen. How can we stop some of this? By eating right, by doing right, by exercising, by all that stuff. Think of this. Here, here's the bottom line. All of a sudden, we go and we get all the cakes back there. We buy five, we get five or six of them, and take them home and just sit there and eat them. Wonder why the next day you're not feeling good. Let me get it on the prayer call. Let me put it on the prayer thing that I'm not feeling too good. Amen? Amen. It, see, see what the problem is? The problem isn't the problem isn't the enemy attack. 
The problem is we were ignorant to understand that sometimes we got to take care of our bodies better. Amen? Amen. Let's be real. Hallelujah. But then all of a sudden, we have some unsaved people at home or family members. And it seems like the house is in utter chaos. Amen? The house is in utter chaos. It becomes what? A distraction. So what happens is we, we are down. We start to feel we start to feel miserable. We start to feel like, man, like, man, what's going on here? So what happens is as soon as we start feeling that way, all of a sudden we're out of God's plan of being able to touch and to heal and to deliver and to share the good news, and the enemy is one. The enemy is one because distraction now. Amen? One of the first things that, that, we, that Jamie and I do, if there's a problem at home, or there's a situation or a circumstance with my daughters or things, first thing we do, come on, let's go. Let's join hands and let's pray right now in the name of Jesus. And I take authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why? Because that is, as the father and the head of the household, I have the privilege and the ability to do that. Amen. Not wait until all of a sudden all hell breaks loose, Amen. and then I'm in the foxhole. God, I need your help. Amen? Amen? When you see it, Don't annihilate it. Get rid of it. Does that mean it's going to go away? No, there's still going to be some, guess what? There's still going to be some uh, residual uh, stuff going on. But you know what? Stand still and watch God move. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Our finances. Hallelujah. You see, a lot of this stuff is all distractions. Because if we're a good steward, if we're doing what God wants us to do, if we, if we save and we take care of things, instead of going out and just having, buying whatever we want to buy, whatever we want to buy, and next thing we know is we don't have any, we don't, we don't have any, there, there's no more, there, what is it, there's no more money left at the end of the month. Amen? Well, the bottom line of being is maybe we've got to go back and look at what we've been doing all month with our finances. What have we been doing with it? God, I need more money. I mean, I, sometimes God says to me, so what are you doing with what I've given you? What are you doing with what I've given you? Are you being a good steward with it? You see, a lot of times what happens is it becomes a distraction because we've allowed it to be a distraction. And when it's a distraction, it gets us off the path of what God has. And then we don't feel like coming out to Bible study. We don't feel like helping out here. We don't feel like going there. We don't feel like doing that. Why? Because all this stuff that were distractions, now we feel, as my brother John would say, we feel like poop. <laughs> feel like poop. We just don't feel like doing it. I don't feel like serving the Lord right now. Why? Because we allow distractions to get into our way. What we've done is, instead of being like this, where the air is clear, and everything is nice and quiet, and just, we come down to here, to with Sambaya, and Tobiah and them. So all they wanted to do was do not, they set up, they, they're just nothing but giving you what? Negativity, 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 negativity. Amen? Amen. And what happens sometimes, we blame everybody else for all their negativity, but we don't look into the mirror and look at our negativity. Yeah, right, right, our negative. are we sowing good seeds? Are we, are we giving encouragement? Or are we blaming everybody else for the negativity and realize that we're doing the same thing, but we don't see it in a, in a mirror? We don't see it in a mirror. Distractions. You see, I see it over and over and over. And many times, and many, not only in, in Ecclesias, but throughout, throughout the, the, the body of Christ, I see we, we, we embrace all this stuff. We embrace. We embrace. We can get into that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We look, let, let's look at We look at Facebook. We look at the Internet. We look at all that stuff that goes on. We look at radio. And we watch people that are already know. We already know they don't like us. That's right. That's right. We already know they don't like us. Amen. But we want to get on there and see what they said about us. Can I say that again? Did we get that or not? Now, how many times what we want to do is we're up here and all of a sudden we hear something and we go, instead of just 
stand up here where God has called us to be. Our hearts are clean. Our eyes are clean. Our mind is clean. We come down to the muck and mire and allow the world to dictate to us what we already know. Yeah. Amen? Right. What we already know. What we already know. Oh, did you hear what Fox said? Hey, did you hear what this said? Did you, man, did you see what they're going to do? Hey, you, you know how much stuff of that is nothing but garbage? It's all media hype. It's all media hype to sell a television program. Amen? Do you know that every television program, every radio program, every, every, every newspaper is owned by a group of people that have certain beliefs? Can I get an amen? amen. Certain beliefs. And they will push what they believe in their paper that they own. They have a right to do that. That's called freedom of speech. And what we do is we pick and choose what we want to allow to agree with, and then we fight with somebody else who doesn't agree with us, but we want to fight with them because they don't agree with us. Yeah, figure that one out. And we wonder why we're in a scenario we're in. Because we need to get up out of the miry junk and be about the Father's business. Be about the Father's business. In every aspect of our lives. Amen? I, good thing I haven't heard any ouches yet. That's good. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Our job. Our job can become so consuming. Amen? Our job can become so consuming. Look at all the things that are up here. All this stuff, even our family, our family become, can become, can become a distraction. Amen. Every bit of this up here can become distractions. And these distractions are nothing more but the enemy's attack or our design because we've chosen to embrace these distractions instead of being about the Father's business. Amen? Amen. So today, I just want you to think about this. I want you to look, and I want you to see, up here, there are some different, there's, there's tons of other ones. We could put up there alcohol. We could put drugs. We could put over-the-counter over, over prescriptions. We could put, we could put food. We could put, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that we could put up here for distractions. We all know those things. The bottom line of being is, is there something that's causing you to be distracted from what God's called you to do? Is there something that God has called you to do, but there's a distraction because we're down here so much, picking all the little junk, instead of getting up, up in the air where it's nice and clean, where, it, where the air is, you, you can hear things crisp, crisp and clear. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful sight. You can see for miles. You can only see for a few feet ahead of you down here. See, if we're all like this, what happens is we start to do one thing. We start to encourage one another. We start to encourage one another. There will never be one negative thing that comes out of our mouth to another brother and sister in Christ. And as we continue to do that, what happens is, believe you me, hey, we all fall short of that. We all fall short of that. But today's message is get us to a place that Nehemiah ended up building the walls. Amen? Despite... All those ones that came against him that hated him, he stood still, he kept focused, and he completed the task that God had called him to do. Amen? Amen. So what is it that God's called you to do? And maybe we've never done it because we've had so much opposition that now we get, we get gun shy. Now I'm not going to do it now because I know that somebody ain't going to... I hear that all the time. There are times that I say something to somebody, and I'll be honest with you, there's times that I don't tell people. Because the first thing I hear is, yeah, but what about... I don't even want to hear it then. I don't even want to hear about it. But what about? What about? What about? <laughs> Boy, i got to pause. i got to get my... <laughs> Refocus here. 
Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Precious Lord. Lord, you've challenged me this week, Lord. You've challenged me this week to find my distractions. What's distracting me from doing your business, Lord? Lord, you showed me. You shared with me. Lord, I've repented of it. And Lord, I know that's up to me, Lord God, not to allow it to be a distraction anymore. Father, I can only ask you, Lord, to pour out that grace to each and every one in this room. Lord, I got to believe that, Lord God, even through this message, Lord God, that, Lord, you showed us, Lord God, some of the distractions that's holding us back from doing, Lord God, what you've asked us to do. And, Lord, we embrace it because it's so easy to embrace nothing than to do something. It's so easy to sit back and relax. It's so easy for this body to just be come dormant, last of days ago. But Lord, you've called us, Lord. You said, get up to arise, to go forth, and to accomplish great things. Lord, you've, you've called us, Lord God, to be able to, to rise above the muck and mire, Lord God. Because, Lord God, you removed us out of that. And yet, there's so many times, Lord God, we want to crawl back into that muck and mire. Because it just seems comfortable. But, Lord, there's freedom, Lord God. There's freedom in soaring high. There's freedom, Lord God, where the air is crisp and clean. Lord, there's Lord, the food is plentiful. Whenever we need it, it's right there. Help us, Lord, to get away from, Lord God, the ground, Lord God, that looks so disgusting. That, Lord, we, we lower ourselves down to being a blue jay and a sparrow and a buzzard and chickens because we're afraid to fly high. We're afraid to step out. We're afraid to... Allow you, Lord God, to strip us, Lord God, of all those earthly desires so that, Lord God, that we can fly high and soar for miles with very little energy. Holy Spirit, challenge us this morning to take that step of faith. And it may just be for the next hour. It may be for the next day, it may be for the next week. But Lord, you would continue to remind us, Lord God, of the distractions that are in our lives. Not so much the ones that the enemy brings, but the ones that we welcome. Yes. Father, bring that to our remembrance so that, Lord, we can lay that stuff down. So we can move on, Lord. To see lives change. To see communities change. To see our families saved and set free. To see those that are sick, Lord God, healed and delivered. Lord, that we would become, Lord God, that we would learn, Lord God, how to turn off that thing called a cell phone. And give it a break. That, Lord, when we want to type something on Facebook, that, Lord, we type something, Lord, that's encouraging and nothing that's going to be negative or something that's going to come against somebody and then push that enter button. As soon as we do that, Lord, we've literally allowed ourselves to go back into that worldly distraction. Help us, Lord, to rise above that. Help us, Lord, to learn how to pray for one another. Not to judge, not to condemn, but to pray. Yes. How to come alongside and give somebody a hug and tell them, look, I'm praying for you. I'm seriously praying for you. 
that, Father, Lord, we would take authority in our homes. That, Lord, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May that be the heart cry of every, everyone in this room. And Father, most of all, Lord, that we would find that quiet time to just spend with you. That little place, that still, quiet, peaceful, and Lord, we can find rest. So Father, encourage each and every one that's here today, Lord. Father, we do lift up, Lord God, this, this opportunity, Lord, this month of November, Lord, to be able to give to other ministries and, Lord, to give up our tithes and our offerings. Father, we come as a cheerful giver. We know, Lord, we can't outgive. Lord, even as, even as Annette had said, Lord God, Lord, there are so many people, Lord, that are homeless, so many people, Lord God, that are out there on the streets. Lord, help us to get out of ourselves and to help any way we can. Father, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and, Lord, how you're doing it. And, Father, we're careful, Lord, to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen.